Now, as I said at the top of the show, it's hard to fathom how human beings can do to other human beings what we've seen Hamas terrorists do to people in Israel in the past 48 hours. In one case, three generations of the same family have been abducted. We do not know their fate. Here is a mother surrounded by men as she clutches her children, surrounded by terrorist monsters, I should say, and her children are aged four and nine months. She's trying to protect them and they're abducted. Just shocking stuff. One of hundreds of families affected. Let's cross to Jerusalem now and bring in Jonathan Spire from the Middle East Forum. And he joins us live. You can see live pictures at the same time of what's un unfolding in Gaza. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. And I suppose I'll start with those Thanks, live Chris. pictures uh, from Gaza. We are seeing plumes of smoke, probably five or six different plumes of smoke in Gaza now. Are we right to presume this is the result of, uh, of rocket attacks from Israel? Yeah, Chris, not necessarily rocket attacks. It could well be the result of air action. That's to say uh, raids from Israeli aircraft, which have been pretty much ongoing over the Gaza Strip uh, over the last 24 hours. Uh, as you're probably aware, around 360,000 uh, Israeli reservists have been mobilized. Some of those, of course, are on the northern border to deter Hezbollah from entering this uh, fight. But a large number of them are also mustering along the Gaza border. So, yeah, there's certainly an ongoing uh, Israeli action now uh, against the Hamas authority in Gaza. And I suspect that it will uh, intensify in the days ahead, not only from the air, but probably at a certain stage also from the ground. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the ground because we could expect some perhaps special forces raids to try and get to hostages if they know where they are. But eventually, do you think we will see a full ground incursion by Israel into Gaza to essentially clear the place out from terrorists house by house, which will be a long uh, and dangerous process? I think that something like that is going to take place. I just don't think that, uh, you know, an event of the magnitude of what's just taken place in terms of the murder of... We're now... You know, the figures are not yet complete, but we're up to 900 uh, Israelis mur murdered, the majority of them civilians. So, you know, that cannot go unanswered. And I think, without a doubt, you don't mobilise over 300,000 reservists in order to just keep them hanging around, and you can't keep them mobilised forever of course, because of the uh, damage to the economy and so on. So, yes, I think those people have been mobilised and they are going to be uh, deployed. And I think they will be deployed in a ground operation, a large ground operation into Gaza. What exactly the goals of such an operation will be, uh, I think remains slightly more ambiguous. Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, gave a, a speech last night. There have been comments from senior uh, ministers, of course, but nobody has yet clearly defined, for example, that the goal of such an operation would be the ending of Hamas rule in Gaza. Hamas, of course, have ruled in Gaza exclusively now for uh, 16 years. So that goal has not been defined. So it's not quite clear yet what exactly the goals and parameters of such an operation will be, but that something along the lines of a major ground operation will take place uh, in the days ahead, I think, is very, very likely. Does this mean, though, in the end, there's a lot to unfold here? Lives are in the balance. If, if that such an operation happens, there'll be Israeli armed forces who will lose their lives, uh, as well as Hamas, of course, and, and innocent civilians will get yes. caught up in it. It's, it's horrific. I, I don't want to underestimate all that stage. But in the end, if they can clear Hamas out of Gaza... Does this mean that the Palestinian people there are liberated? Do, do, do most of them support Hamas or will they be relieved to have that terrorist operation taken off their shoulders? And does it mean that Israel will then have to occupy Gaza for the foreseeable future? Right. Well, these are very good questions and I think there are no easy answers to them. With regard to support <clears throat> for the Hamas Authority, look, Hamas has brought impoverishment and it's brought military, Israeli military retaliation down on the people of Gaza. But we should remember the last time when the Palestinians were able to have a vote, which was in 2006, when there was an internationally observed free election in both the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, Hamas uh, were the victors. And I think that, you know, we should not underestimate the extent to which the kind of sentiments that exist in Hamas also exist among the Palestinian public. I don't think we should make the mistake uh, thinking, you know, that well, this, this is just an, a dictatorship imposed from above and the people are longing to be uh, to be freed from it. 
You know, I think on yep. the contrary, uh, they do have considerable support, uh, which means that if the Hamas authority were to be destroyed, then yes, as you mentioned, Israel faces a very uh, clear dilemma because then there is the possibility of reoccupation of the area against the will of the population who may well then mobilize in revolt against it. So if the Hamas authority is to be destroyed, very serious questions would then remain regarding what authority then administers the Gaza Strip. Jonathan, uh, we don't have much time left. Uh, final answer, the, the horrific question. What will be the fate of the hostages? I mean, the, it's a, a tragic situation in which we now think it's 160 people, 130 to 160 people are inside there. If Hamas have said they're going to execute one hostage for every time Israel carries out an air raid without prior warning. So I'm afraid the fate of those people tragically really does uh, hang in the balance right now. And unfortunately, one cannot say with any degree of confidence that they'll be returning home anytime soon. And tragically, maybe some of them we won't be seeing again. Just terrific. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us. Stay safe. Thanks, Chris.